Thanks for joining us again today on tools, tactics, and training. Today we'll be talking about sheaths. Uh, general topic: Kydex sheaths with a you know custom Kydex sheaths that I've made. I'll also show some manufacturer supplied sheaths that are plastic and Kydex um, and other materials, and uh, just go over sheaths in general. And really, the idea here is a knife is only as good as its sheath. If you dislike your carrying system for your tools, uh, and you're especially if you're on foot, you're not going to have that tool when you need it. Uh, it's, in my opinion, the best way to carry a knife is to not even feel it there. Uh, you know, you know it's there, but it, it's not dragging you down. It's not catching on things. It's not, um, you know, rusting up your knife. There's a lot of things you got to keep in mind when you're carrying your knife in the wild. And that's that's my focus. I, I prefer to have everything ready to carry, you know, when I go backpacking, camping, um, just on, you know, photographic adventures, what have you. So the history of this and the crappy sheath that started it all. So uh, one thing I always strive for on this channel is to give honest and unbiased reviews. I think we're all a little biased towards something we've spent our hard-earned cash on and we appreciate, but you get my drift here. I'm not paid to do these reviews other than anything I may get, get through YouTube advertising or referral links, things like that. Uh, manufacturers aren't paying me to say these things and you know I, I'm just going to tell the truth as it is. And The story of my venture into making custom Kydex sheaths started with a really bad sheath. I mean, a really, really bad sheath. And you know what? I'm going to name names. Sorry to call you out on this, Sog Knives. But the sheath that came with my Sog Northwest Ranger was pitiful, in my opinion. It was useless. Uh, I don't even have it to show you in its full form because I destroyed it. I took it apart so that the knife would actually fit. Uh, it was a leather sheath. And with the belt loop cut off, it fits in there perfect. Fits in there nice. Retains it pretty well. Uh, but when it was all, you know, as it came from the manufacturer, you can see the belt loop gets in the way. I mean, there was two layers of leather there. And they just rub right up against the, the guard here. And it, it just didn't even fit in this first, the first SOG I got, the first SOG Northwest Ranger, did not fit in the sheath at all. Uh, it was so bad that I thought I might have got a, you know, Chinese SOG or, you know, something that was fake, I'm saying, uh, reproduction or what have you. So I contacted SOG directly and I asked them, you know, what's going on here? The, the sheath is horrible for this. And they confirmed it was a official SOG product. They said that the, you know, the knife should fit in the sheath, obviously, and that, you know, leather wears in with wear, but... I just didn't like the fact that it wouldn't even fit in the sheath that came with. It was a principle of the thing. I spent, you know, $55, $60 on this knife. It should have a sheath that it can that I can use that it at least fits in. Um, so could it have gotten better with use and extreme stretching? Maybe. Am I willing to deal with that on a knife I just bought? Barely. Is leather a good choice for something called the Northwest Ranger? to be used possibly near their headquarters of SOG based out of Seattle, Washington, right where I'm at, USA, uh, where it averages 60 inches of rain a year. Is leather a good choice? Even if it's a stainless steel knife, OS 8 is not the most stainless thing in the, in the world. It will rust. And uh, I've done the research and this SOG Northwest Ranger will fit in a SOG seal pup sheath which is nylon and much better made. So this is an example of why I got into sheath making. Um, I was really unhappy with the sheath, but I really, really liked the knife. I, I love this knife. So why, why have a horrible sheath for a knife you like? A knife is only as good as its sheath. I believe in and have studied that a knife is pointless if you don't have it with you when you need it. Um, so you won't have it with you if it's not comfortable to carry. Seems pretty point blank, makes sense to me. That's my thought process. That's my, you know, 
thought process behind my little obsession with sheaths. Um, it's, it's a real challenge in the knife community, in my opinion. A lot of the knives that you get don't come with very good sheaths. And upgrading is expensive. Uh, so that's why I wanted to do this video and talk about it. How I made my sheaths, just a general description. Um, I gathered information for all, from all over the glorious internet. Uh, various sources that I wish I could credit here, but I, I don't remember all of them, unfortunately. Um, so what I gathered was the key to working with Kydex is heating it slowly. You start at a low temperature and slowly raise it up in increments of 10 degrees Fahrenheit, 15, until you get to that specific number that will um, make it to where it's easily formable. Um, when you purchase the Kydex, it should come with instructions that explain what temperature is best for the Kydex you get. I get Kydex V material, which is recycled. And I believe its best or ideal thermoforming temperature is 182 degrees Celsius. Um, but again, you, know, you just want to check and make sure based on what you're working with. So what I did was you, you'll get just a sheet, a blank sheet of Kydex. I got 12 inch by 12 inch. Uh, it's too big to fit in the whole screen here, but it's just flat. 0 .80, 0 0 0.080 inches thick, I should say. Made in the USA. Um, so you draw a general shape of the sheath that you want to make on the Kydex with pencil. You, you know, you'll put your, your knife on the, sh on the Kydex, draw out the general shape, making sure you have extra room for the rivets. So here I kind of drew, drew it, you know, here's the knife. You got to make sure you have a quarter inch rivet size which is what I preferred. Um, I, I did make another one with 3 16 inch, and I'll show you that one later. Uh, but you'll draw it out on the kydex. Or you'll draw it out with pencil on the kydex, the general shape. You draw the rivet locations, and then you cut the kydex into the general shape for thermoforming. Um, I made a press out of thick plywood and furniture foam, and then I just heated the Kydex in a home oven and pressed the Kydex with the homemade press and stood on it basically uh, with my weight to press it around the knife. Uh, there's two different kinds of Kydex sheaths mainly. There's the taco shape style, which is a fold over basically. So you just fold it over the knife and then rivet the bottom only. And uh, what's great about that is it should naturally have a really great drain hole. Uh, this is a very large drain hole. And as you can see, I, I cut this out by hand with tin snips. I sanded it by hand. I pressed it. Uh, everything just basically with home, home tools and nothing fancy. No, no, you know, large equipment. So it's not perfect, but it is smooth. It's lightweight fits the knife well, no rattle, good retention, it's not coming out. Um, it's very close fitting to the knife and formed well and that saves space and carries well on your side. It doesn't catch on things as easily in my opinion. So then once I uh, stood on the press, shaped it around the knife, then you cut it out the rest of the way, you drill out the holes for the rivets, and you hand, I hand pressed the rivets in, and then sanded the edge, with hand sanded the edge just with a sanding, you know, piece of sandpaper on sponge until it's smooth. Um, so just, that's just a general idea of how you make a Kydex sheath at home or how I did it. And again, if there's enough interest in that, I could make an instructional DIY tutorial. So uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you want made and I'll look into doing that. So talking about Kydex sheaths, I wanted to give an example of some manufacturer made Kydex sheaths and, and similar materials to Kydex. Um, this here is a Boker Plus Kydex sheath. It came with the Koi Ridgeback. Uh, excellent knife. I'll do a review on that one later. 
Uh, this kydex is 0 .060 inches thick. Um, so that is thinner than the material I use, which is 0 .080 inches thick. Uh, however, with a smaller knife like this, just based on my use so far, I've found that this is acceptable. It's still tough. Um, it's not quite as rigid because it's thinner, but it it's doing the job just fine uh, for this smaller knife. So uh, I like that that thinner Kydex because of it saves weight. Uh, so there's there's an example of a manufacturer made sheath by Boker uh, Kydex sheath, I should say, made by Boker Plus, and uh, the the problem with this sheath, in my opinion, is the belt clip it came with. Uh, it's very flimsy. It does have a lot of a lot of mounting options. However, one thing I, I've seen with both the manufacturer-made Kydex sheaths and even my custom ones that I make is the raised portion uh, near the guard of the knife interferes with mounting anything there. So if you like to carry the knife lower, you have to figure out a way to attach uh, the belt clip or whatever you use higher up rather than down here where it's designed to, to, to be attached. Let me zoom out a little. So that's the conundrum. Look how big this thing is compared to the sheath too. It's, it's just ridiculous. So anyways, uh, I've already had a Boker tech lock adapter. Uh, I definitely recommend these if you're interested in something that'll work well with its multi-purpose. Uh, it, you, it works well with, um, you can adjust it for different size belts by moving these plastic pieces. So you can adjust it for even small belts or larger tactical belts. Uh, I've used it with, you know, just regular dress belt and everything. It, it works great. Uh, it's got a lot of holes, a lot of mounting options. Come with comes with the screws. It's very solid. Uh, but this, you run into the same problem. You want to mount it to where you don't carry it with the knife handle digging into your side all day. You're gonna have to find a way to mount it higher up. And then, even then, you know, see what I, see what you're dealing with here. This raised part gets in the way of doing that. So you could mount it there easily. You could put spacers in, but they'd have to be pretty big spacers. So my solution for this problem was to build this as some scrap kydex that I had. This is just a, what I call a drop attachment. So I drilled the three holes to go with the tech lock adapter. And you actually only need two out of three of those screws. And then I built this to go in to be installed right here. And I wanted to keep this all separate so I could show you and not put it together, but I'll put it together for a late, later part of the video. But this shows you that, um, let's see if I can zoom out just a little. Um, I curved the kydex around that curve of the sheath. And that allows you to carry the knife lower so that the handle of the knife is not digging into your side all day, especially if you lean down a lot, bend down, if you're working in the woods. The hand, I, I, it's just something, it's a personal pet peeve. I don't know if other people agree with me here, but for me personally, I, I like to carry a, a knife lower, not higher. Um, so this is what I came up with and it, it works good for my purposes. The knife sits out a little bit more from your side than it would if you had the tech lock adapter installed without this. But that's just the nature of the beast, uh, something you have to deal with with that handle. So, Just to give you an idea of the different things you might face with the Kydex sheath, even from a manufacturer, uh, and depending on how you like to carry your knife, some things to consider there. So I, again, I will show this all put together later. Um, so that's the Boker Plus Koi Ridgeback. Here's another example of a manufacturer made kydex style sheath. This is the CRKT Fultz minimalist Bowie style. Uh, excellent little fixed blade. I'll do a review on that at some point. Um, it's interesting, the kydex sheath they supply with the minimalist Bowie is actually tanto shaped, 
Uh, they also have a tanto shaped one. So, but it actually fits well. The most important part about this sheath for this specific example is the part that forms around the guard, basically. The, this part of the knife is what actually retains it right there. So the blade itself just needs to fit in the sheath. And uh, one thing to check for on all Kydex sheaths is a drain hole. And this has no drain hole. Or very little. Barely, barely there, actually. So that's probably enough for a small sheath. Something to check because Kydex, while it's waterproof and it doesn't retain water, if water gets in there and there's no airflow, it, it doesn't, it doesn't dry out. So you got to keep that in mind. You want you want airflow in your sheath. So there's an example of another manufacturer-made Kydex sheath. I believe this is also the 0 .060 inch thick Kydex and no rattle at all, retains it perfectly. That's what you're looking for. Um, they got it right on the small knife and it's harder to do it on larger knives. Um, here's an example of a really dirty Secure X sheath. This is something Cold Steel came up with. It's very similar, it's just another plastic, it's not specifically Kydex. This one's very well fitted to the knife um, retains very well, no waggle, no rattle, it doesn't shake out, it does not come out, unless you want it to, of course. The downfall to this specific one is that it fits the knife so well that your edge actually can rub against the sheath as you, you know, deploy it. This is the Cold Steel GI Tonto with modifications on the handle. I'll do a full review on that later. But uh, it, it's, it fits great, but it, it when you deploy this, you want to push up so that the spine of the knife is coming in contact with this part of the sheath instead of dulling your blade. So just a tip there, something I've discovered. Uh, not a bad sheath all in all for a $20 knife. It's amazing, honestly. Um, you don't even need the retention strap. That's just something to stabilize the belt loop, really. And they made it to where you can move these, this belt loop attachment up and down, depending on how high you like to carry your knife. So Cold Steel has a pretty good solution for, for carrying Kydex sheaths and, and attaching that belt loop or drop-down attachment. Um, so I do, I do like Cold Steel Securex sheaths there. Just a couple things to keep in mind as far as you know, making sure you don't dull your blade when you just deploy it. And here's the manufacturer provided Kydex sheath for the Boker Plus Koi Ridge Back with my modifications. I put on this, what I call a drop attachment that is formed around the knife, held on here, so that I can put the tech lock adapter higher up so that the handle does not dig into my side as I wear it. Um, this is the best solution I've come up with so far. It's, it sticks a little bit off of your side, you know, it's not right up against your side. But that's just one of the drawbacks from carrying it in a lower position. It's, it's something that you have to do with Kydex sheaths is form around that handle. So this is my solution. I just took a small piece of Kydex that I wasn't using, formed it around that handle part of the knife, drilled three holes so that it could easily, you know, fit a large tech lock adapter. Probably would fit a small tech lock adapter as well. And uh, I just really like this solution because this knife, even though it has a very small handle, um, if I mounted the tech lock adapter where it would fit without this draw uh, the drop attachment, it would only fit right down here, as I showed earlier. So if your belt loop is mounted right here, that handle is going to be digging into your side. Uh, now we've got the belt loop here and a, a nice angle. Uh, I, I like to carry a knife at an angle like that, and so I, I designed it this way, and it's uh, it's very very comfortable. It's something I. I really like so far. It's a good solution for me. 
So I figured I would share what I did there. A couple other manufacturer-made Kydex style sheaths or plastic style sheaths. Uh, we've got a family heirloom. Uh, this is a World War II fighting knife made by Camillus Knives of New York, USA. Uh, this is the sheath that it came with. This is the original knife. A lot of history here. Um, I may do a review just for fun on this knife, just to show some details about it. Uh, the sheath that it came with, or that it has here, is a nice plastic, very heavy duty, got a drain hole drilled through it. Uh, it's not a very big drain hole, but it's good enough. Um, this is super high quality, you know, something I, I really like a lot. It's ambidextrous, you can put the knife in either way, carry the knife however you want. Uh, even after all these years, very little rattle, and that's important uh, for a combat knife. You want to be quiet. Uh, so that sheath is amazing, especially for, what, 1945, 42, you know, I'm not sure the exact manufacturing date, but uh, they were doing it right back then. Um, also, I got the SOG custom, or not custom, but SOG manufactured Kydex sheath for their Tomahawk. Comes with a large tech lock adapter. What's really interesting and nice about this sheath is this button and 360 degree rotation. So when you've got this on your side and you're getting into a vehicle or sitting down in a chair, you can rotate the Tomahawk back and lock it into position and uh, it, it's great. You don't have to take it off. You can move it out of your way. You can adjust it however you need to as you're carrying it and moving throughout the day. And that type of thing is extremely important. Uh, a lot of people base their information on, you know, just holding the knife in their hand and taking it out camping a couple times. But if you use your, your tools or your knives, your tomahawks, what have you, a lot, um, you'll really appreciate sheaths and carrying systems and how to how to have that on you comfortably so that you have it when you need it. So uh, let's just bust out the tomahawk, show you how it fits in here. It's got a nice deployment system and retention system. You put the rear part in first and just move it up and that's locked in. These two holes or these two bumps that are reversed go into the holes at the top or in the middle there of the blade and help retain it extremely well and then it's got a extra retention just in case uh, you know backup retention so to deploy that you just slide that down and then you can pop it right down off your hip which is a lot easier when you're actually wearing it so that is a lot better than the manufacturer supplied sheath that came with that tomahawk uh, this nylon has no weather protection. The belt loop is a joke, in my opinion. I mean, you got to have a small belt, and it's going to be right on your side and uncomfortable. You're going to have metal digging into your side all day. The thing about sheaths is they're expensive. This sheath costs more than the tomahawk. So, you know, <laughs> if you're not going to be wearing the, the tomahawk on your side all day or often... And you're just going to, you know, have it in a backpack or in the trunk of your car when you go camping or what have you. You might not need to upgrade to a, an excellent sheath like the, the one that we've got here. Um, especially considering the cost. A lot of people aren't going to spend the same amount or more on a sheath than they spent on the tool. Uh, that's why I got into making them. And uh, we'll, you know, explain all that in other parts of the video, but... These are manufacturer-made examples of Kydex and other plastic sheaths.